Okay, let's talk about how to actually make use of XAMPP and talk a little bit about why we need XAMPP. If you don't have XAMPP installed, um, then what you can do is you can go and watch my other video on how to install XAMPP. Go ahead and do that now. I'll wait. Okay, so now that they're gone, let's talk about them. I have uh, my flash drive here, and uh, here's my XAMPP folder. So I'll double click on that, and just like in the last video, we're going to scroll down to the bottom to run XAMPP control. When I run that, it opens up the control panel, and I can go ahead and click Start for Apache and Start for MySQL. Now I could click Admin, and this will actually open up the um, the a web browser, my default web browser, to the administration page for uh, for the um, for the appropriate uh, program. Um, however, it's not a bad idea to uh, get into the habit of actually uh, typing in the URL ourselves. So, for instance, I can just go directly here here and type localhost and I hit enter and assuming everything is installed properly I should see a page that looks like this. Now why do we use XAMPP? Okay. We use XAMPP because as we move from doing pages in just HTML and CSS and JavaScript um, those are client-side technologies those our browser actually understands. PHP on the other hand is a server-side technology. That means that, one, our browsers actually don't understand PHP at all, um, so we do need a an actual server for it. We need a PHP-enabled web server. That's what XAMPP is all about. The A is the Apache web server, and the first P there is PHP. Let me give you an example of uh, what I mean by all this. So if I create a new file, call it hello.php and I'm going to go ahead and edit this with a notepad plus plus and here I am in the editor so let me actually type in some uh, some PHP commands here the way to uh, the what we start off our PHP file with is uh, the following directive this is a PHP directive basically just saying that everything inside these uh, these two tags is in fact PHP code itself right and then I can actually type a PHP command um, to have something printed to the screen or actually to the document um, I can use the echo command. So I can say hello from PHP. And let me go ahead and save that. So there's my file, hello.php. Um, notice it says uh, echo hello from PHP. Let's load that up in the browser um, the, way that, uh, the way that we've been doing uh, so far. So if I just go over to here, and uh, let's see if I can grab my file. I'm going to just drag that over into, uh, into my browser here. Um, and what you'll see is... Uh, that it's going to open up and show us, well, nothing. Okay. Now, if we view the source of this, that is, go ahead and do view page source, what we see is this. Okay. Notice. Um, we do, in fact, get the document, and so our browser actually sees these little tags and doesn't really know what to do with them, and so we're really not seeing the output um, of our page, what we should see um, through a properly rendered um, PHP page. Okay. Now, to fix this, what we need to do is to have this file served to the browser or processed first and delivered to the browser from our XAMPP server. Okay. All that means is we need to place this in a location where our XAMPP server knows about it. So I'm going to go back over to my XAMPP folder, and I'm just going to scroll up, and now I'm going to go to the htdocs folder. Okay. htdocs is where you're going to put basically all of the files that you want served by your XAMPP um, server. Okay, so I go into here. You'll notice there's a whole lot of stuff in here. You can ignore these things. Uh, generally, all you're going to do is to create a new folder for whatever project you're working on um, and give it a name. So in my case, I'll just call it hello, and then I'll go to the hello folder. Okay, now nothing's in there at this point, but what I will do is I'll take my PHP file that I just created and drop that in here. 
Okay. Now the other thing to note, I don't have to only put um, PHP files in here. XAMPP um, is a bona fide web server. I can have actual HTML pages in here, and I would do that, right? It's actually quite natural to have HTML pages together with our PHP pages that make up our web application. Okay, right now, I only have hello.php. Again, going back to, uh, to my browser, the way that I now change the URL is I'm going to say localhost, forward slash and now i need to remember the name of the folder that i created namely hello notice i'm leaving off htdocs if i put htdocs in there I'm not going to see anything um, so i can put in hello and i can hit enter by default a uh, zamp will actually show me all the files in that in that folder okay so it shows me here's hello php and now watch this when i click on that i see hello from php completely different okay furthermore if i do a view page source notice i don't see the php tags why because when the server is asked for the hello php file what happens is it loads up that file it processes it reads those php directives and does what those things say to do and essentially replaces the that php set of tags with whatever the php code itself says to do namely in this case say print out hello from php that gives us this. Um, again, just to show you the comparison, as well as to kind of help you with uh, with some of your uh, some of your debugging, because because uh, I know that uh, that some of you uh, are going to do this anyways. Um, you'll uh, you open this up, and again, notice I don't see the same thing. Now the tip off to me is that you know when you see this happen when you're uh, when you're working on your stuff, um, if you look at the URL, if it says file colon slash slash that means that uh, that you did it wrong okay uh, basically if you're dealing with the PHP file you should not see the file colon slash slash what you should see is localhost or even better yet HTTP colon slash slash localhost um, and slash the name of the directory the name of your PHP file as long as you do that you're good to go